ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് the life of the english language is in the way it is spoken where some sounds are accentuated or stressed when compared to other sounds this up and down rhythm of english gives it its beauty some languages do not have this reliance on stresses and will sound da 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 mm it's quite boring but english could sound ba ba bum 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 ba ba bum 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 english is musical when you speak english some parts of a word are stressed or are uttered by giving a bit more time than the other parts these parts of a word pop out and you notice them immediately suppose i say the word english the initial part of the word in is more prominent than the second half lish english the ing part is stressed or accentuated or we take a longer time to utter that sound when compared to the unstressed part lish which is uttered with a shorter time lish english when we say a sentence which consists of multiple words each spoken word may consist of such combinations of stressed and unstressed sounds this is why we say english is a stress timed language speaking english is all about a combination of stressed and unstressed sounds that means some syllables will be longer and some will be shorter do keep in mind that these stressed and unstressed sounds are relative to the sounds around them some sounds might be stressed in a particular context and some might not if we want we can find different combinations of such stressed or unstressed sounds when we repeat them we get a pattern of sounds poetry is all about such patterns which get repeated such patterns of sounds are called rhythms and meter is how you measure the rhythm of a poem although we use both these concepts interchangeably there is a difference a rhythm refers to the overall tempo or pace at which the poem unfolds while meter refers to the measured beat established by patterns of stressed and unstressed syllables we could say meter produces rhythm in poetry meter is the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables in a verse or line of a poem meter is the basic rhythmic structure of a line with a work of poetry meter consists of two components the number of syllables the syllable is a unit of pronunciation having one vowel sound with or without surrounding consonants forming the whole or part of a word for example there are two syllables in the word water wa water now remember a syllable in a word 
is the same as the number of vowel sounds in the word. Consonant sounds do not really matter when we want to find the number of syllables in a word. Just look for the vowel sounds. Now, uh, words like do, be, it, key have only one syllable and are called monosyllabic words. Mono, one, single, monosyllabic words. Cleaning has two syllables. Cleaning, ing. The long E sound and the short E sound. E and E. Cleaning. It is disyllabic. Understand. 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 Has three syllables. It's trisyllabic. So the first component that determines the meter or the rhythmic pattern is the number of syllables. What is the second? The pattern of emphasis of these syllables. When we say different words, we give emphasis or stress certain parts of the word. In the word water, for example, wa is stressed. Water. We don't say water, we say water. The t, uh, t, t syllable is unstressed. Wa is stressed. Water. Water. Stress syllables are also known as the long syllables because we, we give a little bit more time to utter those sounds. Water. Water. T is the unstressed syllable or the short syllable and wa is the, the stressed syllable. In the word understand, understand, the first two syllables un and d are unstressed. Or they are the short syllables. And stand, stand is stressed. So it's the long syllable. So if a line contains water, 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 we have a combination of a stressed syllable wa and an unstressed syllable t. We have a line of poetry here. Water, 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 water. Stressed, unstressed, stressed unstressed and so on water 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 stressed unstressed stressed unstressed then the pattern gets repeated this is the pattern in which the sounds are arranged this gives us the uh, the meter of that line water 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 when we listen to music we dance and we use our feet to tap to the beats in the same way Poems also use their feet. Feet? Do poems have feet? Yes, of course they do. The two sounds I mentioned above, water, water, they are functioning like the feet of the poem. So, if we repeat water five times in a line, we can say that that particular line has five feet. Well, up. Uh -huh. A line of poetry can be broken into feet, which are the individual units within a line. A foot of poetry has a specific number of syllables and a specific Pattern of emphasis. A foot can also be called a beat. Now, let us look at few names. Anas, Aju, Isha, Adwait, Ishan, Smita, Ehsan. These names consist of two syllables. Aju, Anas. The first one is unstressed and the second one is stressed. We don't say aju, we say aju. Isha, there might be some isha, but then usually it's isha. Ishan, we don't say smita, we say smita. Aju, esan. Such combinations of unstressed and 
stressed syllables form an iamb i a m b am if such words appear in a line of a poem each of these units or the combinations of these syllables they consist of an unstressed and stressed syllable and this is what we call an iambic feat it's a combination of an unstressed and a stressed syllable if there are five such sets the line is in iambic pentameter penta five when you have a single foot in a line it is monometer then you have two feet this diameter then the, when there are three feet we have trimeter four is tetrameter and when there are five in a line we call it a pentameter if there are six hexameter iambic pentameter is a line that consists of 10 syllables in a specific pattern of unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable so there will be five sets of unstressed syllables and stressed syllables in each line each of these sets is called a foot you might also find a u and a slash on top of various syllables this denotes which syllable is unstressed and which one is stressed the unstressed syllable is marked by this u by this letter u on top of that sound and the stressed ones are marked by the slash we usually draw lines or slashes to mark the different foots in a line of poetry this method or practice of determining and graphically representing the metrical pattern of a line of verse is known as scansion so we use lines or slashes to demarcate or differentiate between uh, different feet in a line and we also use the 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 u sign to to mark the unstressed and the slash to mark the stressed syllable in each line this method is known as so what we are doing is called scansion so we are continuing with ams some words are pronounced as a combination of unstressed and stressed syllables look at the word arise awake delight amuse believe contain so if we keep these words in a line arise awake amuse attract contain i hope you understood how this i am comes into being i am big pentameter so if you have five words uh, and each word has a combination of unstressed and stressed syllable and if each of these words uh, contain two syllables each then we have this iambic pentameter identifying the unstressed and stressed syllables in a line of poetry is slightly tricky and it requires practice we are getting familiarized with these terms now look at shakespeare's uh, the first line of shakespeare's sonnet 18 shall i compare thee to a summer's day shall i compare so the first line that that little line is an iambic pentameter shakespeare wrote most of his sonnets using this meter iambic pentameter in some lines the feet may consist of a syllable which belongs to one word and the other belongs to another word look at the word summer summer the two syllables they they supply two different feet the focus here is only on the rhythm so don't so don't think that uh, all these sounds are contained within a particular word they can overlap with other words as well so just just look for the the unstressed and the stressed syllables to understand the meter now let us look at another metric foot now my name is vishwas wish was there are two syllables here wish was ra ji ra ji lakshmi lakshmi ardra ardra twinkle twinkle tiger tiger burning bright this metric foot is called a trochee 
or the trachaic feet. It consists of a stressed syllable. Twinkle. We don't say twinkle. Say twinkle. Tiger. Raji. The stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. Twinkle. Tiger. 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 Stressed followed by unstressed. Trochee. What about the word Mary? Mary. How many syllables are there? Two syllables. May and re. Mary. Mary. The stress is on the first syllable. May. A. May. And then may and then re. The re. That re part, that re syllable is unstressed. Mary. Mary had a little lamb. There are four sets here. This is trochaic tetrameter. Mary had a little lamb. Trochaic tetrameter. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Now if there are five trochaic foot in a line, we get a trochaic pentameter. Similarly, other combinations of syllables are also possible. What if we, we get two stressed syllables? That is called a spondy. Spondy. Example. Toothache. Toothache. Bookmark. Handshake. Both are stressed. Tooth. Ache. Book. Mark. Hand. Shake. Both syllables, they come together and both are stressed. It's a spondy. Can we have a foot consisting of three syllables? Yes. For instance, the anapest consists of two unstressed syllables followed by a stressed syllable. Words such as understand, understand, contradict are examples for the anapest foot. Because both of them, they have three syllables where the accent is only on the final syllable. Understand, anapest is the anapest foot. Then we have the dactyl, which consists of a stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. Stressed followed by two unstressed syllables. The word poetry itself, it's an example for a dactyl with the stressed syllable falling on po, po, poetry, followed by the unstressed syllable a uh, poetry, poetry, po, a, uh, and tree, e. O, A, uh, and E. Poetry. Humanly. Humanly. Hu, U, Man, A, uh, A, uh, and E. Humanly. Again, it's also an example for dactyl. You know, this, this word dactyl originates from the Greek word dactylos, which means finger. Because it is like the bones of human fingers. Beginning from a central long knuckle, which is followed by two short bones. The central long knuckle represents the stressed uh, syllable and the two small bones which follow it, they represent the, the short syllables. Humanly. Poetry. Always remember, the stressed and unstressed syllables need not be always within a word. I just gave you examples so that you, it, you understand what these terms mean. So they might be spread out over the line. Our job is to figure out where the stressed syllable appears and where the unstressed comes. Let me recap. We find the meter of a poem by checking for the stressed and the unstressed syllables. Then we look how they are arranged, in what part pattern they are arranged. And finally, we count the number of such patterns in each line. Thus, we get the meter of a poem. With this, we wind up our class on meter. Remember, this is all about practice.